Hello everyone, get ready for another round of Sega Saturn Osmus, and of course our very first game is going to have to be Panzer Dragoon Sega, and there's a little bit of improvement to speed and performance in this video, in contrast to the last two videos. So we're actually going to be running this pretty damn nicely, and for those of you who are uninitiated, this game is actually a limited release game, just like Earthbound on Super Nintendo, and uh, they're both incredibly difficult to get for under $100 even used nowadays, and I hope if I actually load the right core. Uh, but yes, this game is a four-disc game, and it's very, very difficult to acquire, use, and even more so new. But, uh, it is very, very cool because it not only has the Flying Dragon sections, but it also has on-foot, uh, RPG action elements. You'll see what I mean. But we're gonna check this out, and this game is running so nice right now. So we have Panzer Dragoon Zwei and Saga. And I have to say, out of the entire series, my favorite of the entire series would be Orda, which is on Xbox. I played that the most out of all of them, but I love one. This is why Sega, Orda, and Crimson Dragon on the Xbox One, and even the Game Gear version, which I showed in a few videos ago. But here we go, Panzer Dragon Sega. Incredible soundtrack as well, and uh, there's no guarantee you're going to be able to play from uh, Disc 2 and on. You might only be able to play Disc 1 for now, but I'm going to see what I can do as far as running Disc 2, 3, and 4. Because it would be beautiful indeed to be able to play all four of these. But we might be able to do a little bit of a workaround where we have a save file and just load up Disc 4 from the get-go, though. We'll see, though. But like with Sega CD, it was a little bit finicky and tricky to get multi-disc going for the longest time. The one who controls Edge. And there are going to be a few other games that I'm testing that people requested, like I said. But of course we had to do Panzer Dragon Sega first. Okay, camera thematic. I love this music already. Absolutely joyous and wondrous. The type of music that I'd probably just play and go to sleep to if I ever had trouble sleeping. Normally I listen to metal music though, but this music right here definitely stands out. It's a beautiful, beautiful soundtrack. It is my real name? No, it is not. I'm not sure what happens if you put no, it is not, but I'm going to do it is my real name nonetheless here. And again, we're going to start out on foot here. Let's try to get acclimated to the controls again. Because it's been a while since I've last fully played this game uh, about 10 years ago. And unlike games like uh, Okami, you can actually skip the uh, cinemas if you'd really like to. For the most part. So we can actually skip this part if we want to, and try to get to the gameplay. Why not? And uh, of the time, there's a little bit of uh, a setback with some games where they actually had fog, like, uh, to cover up the drawing distance. Like, if you ever played, like, uh, Road Rush, you might notice that you go around corners a lot because it's trying to mask the pop-in effect of some of the buildings that just generally pop in. Here, we just have shadows or darkness in the background to mask the drawing effect. I'll just say kind of just pop out of nowhere. And it's much worse if you play uh, Body Harvest on Nintendo 64 as a prime example. Okay, let's start checking out uh, these little shards here. We have a shell plate. So yes, we have the Castlevania style RPG action stuff going on here. Okay, let's see what we have here. Other shards. And unlike, uh, we got a handgun. Elevator key. Unlike in Metroid Prime, where you actually had to hold a button down and go to scanning mode here, you just uh, do your target and reticle right to an object, click and point, and it works out pretty nicely. Okay, we got these things there, which should unlock our elevator, uh, elevator if I remember correctly. Okay, whatever kind of elevator this is in these uh, chaotic times. Big, big fan of Dragon games, even though there are only so few of these over the years. Even Lair, which I might showcase in a video because I actually still have that for PS3. And I like playing it with the uh, motion controls, even though they actually did later on add a patch for, of course, the uh, controller controls. Come on, ride the train. That'd be a perfect thing here, but we're going to ride the elevator instead. Remember that 90s uh, song? Come on, ride the train. Woo, woo, whatever the hell that song is even about. But we're going to get to the next section here, and it should be, if I recollect properly, the dragon flying section. So how to train your dragon before how to train your dragon was ever uh, into fruition. I still have quite a few movies to catch up on. I haven't seen the latest how to train your dragon as of yet, or even the latest Toy Story 4. But some of these movies have been getting pretty bad reviews. I did like Toy Story 3. I'm not like the hugest animated movie fan. I usually watch 
horror or sci-fi movies first and foremost, but I will watch the animated movies as they come along, too. They give them a shot. Big Six was a pretty good one. Great music here. Let's check out the gameplay, and uh, we should be on our dragon now. Let's see if I can get reacclimated to the controls, because it's been a while. It doesn't do the straight on uh, rail thing, as before now you actually have to control your dragon. Like, you actually make him accelerate, decelerate, and so on. Beautiful, beautiful music indeed. Absolutely awesome music. But we should have time to do a few more games before we close up shop here. And then I'm going to get more updated done and try to get this out over the weekend for you guys and gals. And yes, we don't have crazy dubbing here. We actually have the original Japanese voices, which are always cool to listen to in many, many games. Just with the subtitles. That's the way it should be. Because sometimes dubbing is pretty atrocious. Let's see if I can get used to these controls again. There we go. Oh, this is so awesome. Let's see if I have any weapon controls here. Oh, yeah, I can do a barrel roll. Break it. Definitely a worthwhile game to play here. Stolarium. And just the sense of adventure here is just second to none. I mean, you don't know what's around each corner here. But very, very happy on this one. We're going to try a few more games now. But yes, when you get the update, definitely check out Disc 1 of Panzer Dragon Saga, which is run awesome. Uh, we're going to try a fighting game next. Uh, Astro Superstars, which is uh, personally requested. We'll look at a beautiful artwork first. There we go. This should be kind of almost like a cute up fighter from what I'm seeing here. And we'll try with the abuse uh, work in progress again. And we'll try to get a half dozen more games into the lineup here. But we're going to try this fighting game first because there should be some good fighting games in the lineup that would work well. Because some of them are polygonal and might not work as well as others that are typically like their Street Fighter Alpha series. Which should be running there flawlessly as well as like X-Men Children of the Atom and so on. But you might have noticed I tried running Clockwork Night 1 and Bug in my previous video. In this video I'm going to test Clockwork Night 2 and see how that runs. So here we go, my first test of this game. I've run this before on emulator many, many years ago, but uh, in, of course, on the real Sega Saturn. But we're going to try it on here. And I'm getting a little prompt that it needs 4 megabytes of uh, memory there. I might be stuck at the memory screen here. Going into the core options real quick. Four megabyte extended RAM. I do have the RAM there, but the game is still not starting. So this game might actually be broken. I'm going to come back to it. So yeah, we have another game that might not work. Again, I'm showing you each and every game that I test to make sure. So sorry that Astro Superstars is not working right now. But we're going to move on to Clock Fork Night 2. And I'm hopeful that this one works. And again, this is definitely like a Toy Story uh, style side-scrolling game. Please work, because we didn't have Bug or Clockwork Night 1 working in the previous video. And again, uh, we're going to have quite a few test parameters to go on when the final release goes. So we will very, very quickly ascertain which games work and which ones do not. I mean, all you guys and guys are definitely going to be giving me feedback on games that do not work. I'm more concerned with games that do not work so I can test those out, more so than games that do work. Because for the most part, 85% plus of games have worked absolutely fine for me thus far. I've only counted like four or five games that did not work. But at least uh, games like Panzer Dragoon, uh, Zwei, and Saga are both working. I'm very, very happy on that. And my Shinobi Legion. And we got a real music song here. Okay, let's check this awesomeness out. And somebody also wanted me to try doing a shader on this core. I'm going to try a shader right now. Once we're in game and see if the shader cleans up the graphics any. Let me get into the game before I mess with it, though. Because remember, sometimes shaders can actually take a little bit of a performance hit. But let's see how they look pre-shader and with the shader. I'm going to do like a CRT shader. Give it kind of a cathode tube uh, style effect. Okay, so we have our uh, simple setup here. Now we're going to go into a quick menu. Shaders, load shader preset. And I'm going to go to uh, a CRT shader. Right here. And let's see which one we want to do. We'll do the CRT for the NES Mini. Okay? 
And if you ever have lag, like when you change the shader, go back. Right here, I have no lag, which means the shader's gonna work fine. Let's check it out. Oh, that looks awesome. So the shader is very damn cool. Okay, so far so good. Again, uh, shaders can sometimes slow games down, so remember that. Definitely check out the lag ability of the menu. And there are quite a few shaders to check out. Not bad. Game's running fine. I'm glad that this is working, even though I had a, a dud on... Oh, that's cool how that changed. I wonder if I can go back to there. I really like that effect there. Kind of reminds me of that Zelda game where you're doing that 2D effect around the walls. That is awesome. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Not bad. I'm definitely going to be coming back here because I have a feeling some of the boss battles are going to be kind of fun to play. Reminds me of a Castle Illusion Mickey Mouse game. And it's running nice and fast and very, very smooth, especially with the CRT in the S filter. And oh, great. I screwed myself. <laughs> okay. On that note, we're going to move on to another game, but I'm going to go back into shaders here. And I'm going to turn it back to uh, the stock. But I'm going to try another shader on the next game. Uh, let's go to content. Star Trek. I'm going to try one more game before I exit and clear the memory. But we got Clockwork Night 2 running great. Very, very happy on that one. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, Darius Gaiden. Somebody requested I run this game. I've run this in many videos on other platforms before, but I'm hoping this one works. And uh, one person told me that this is much better on Sega Saturn than the PlayStation 1 version, but this game is also on PSP, so I'd like to know which version of this you actually like out of all of them. But uh, personally, I love the Darius Burst Chronicles on my PlayStation Vita and PS4. I absolutely love that game. I bought that for 40 US dollars the day it came out. And no set my shader is still on CRT. Because there's a little trick you have to actually utilize to get the shader to go back to square one. I'm going to show you this, but uh, for right now I'm actually going to just load another shader. But yeah, if you ever have a shader get stuck, I'm going to show you what to do to revert it back to stock. Now right now, even though I put it on stock, it's only going to be temporarily in stock. Uh, and then when I go to another game, it's going to have that shader for CRT again. But I'm going to show you how to revert it back to stock. Don't worry. Because this is something that affects that retro arc on all of the mini classics. Cause you can make it where it doesn't save retro configuration whatsoever, but I don't like doing it that way because it gets more perturbing that way. Okay, let's see if we have any options here. Uh, we can play in hard mode activate. Why not? Let's try it. But yes, let's see if this is any better than the PlayStation 1 version. Starts out just like the uh, PSP version. Running nice and smooth. Very, very happy here. Let's see if we can get to the part where that woman is singing because we all know the Darius games have amazing soundtracks. This is definitely running better than the main version. Definitely way better than the main version. But we'll get to the part where she starts saying it and compare. If I can get there without dying, though. And I love that the music is actually uh, uh, staying in action here without quitting on me. Okay, we should have the woman start singing here anytime now. Playing awesome, nice and smooth. There's actually a little bit of slowdown in the main version. Because it is a title F2 game, of which all of them are hard to run, such as Dungeon, uh, Dungeon, uh, <laughs> I'm saying Dungeon Explorer. Yeah, but it actually run great here. Very, very happy on this one. Beautiful, beautiful indeed. No slowdown whatsoever. This is so cool. But now we're actually going to exit Retroarc, and I'm going to show you how to get the shader off. But thanks for recommending this Darius game. I'm going to be coming back to it for sure. I can definitely see clear as night and day that it is better than the PlayStation 1 version. So the very first thing we're going to do is go into shaders from the get-go. We're going to go to low content. Just load uh, something like an NES game. Okay, we're just going to load a random NES game. And we'll load it with the FCE MM Core. 
Then we're going to load a shader. Load shader preset. Stuck. And then we're going to actually uh, close content. Then we're going to exit back. Now the shader is off. So you can literally just close content after picking a shader and then come back into the retro arc. And then when we load a standard game, it will no longer have that shader. It'll be back to stock. Square one. Oh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, we're going to try this uh, game that was never released called Werewolf the Apocalypse. Again, we're going to run with the Abu's work in progress. It'll be back on the stock uh, shader, of course. No more CRT. And this game is pretty, <laughs> pretty funny to check out. Okay. If any of you have any trouble ever changing the shaders, just let me know. There are probably 10 different ways you could change it back, but my way is just loading the uh, core, changing the shader, and then exiting. But an NES game is probably the best one to do it because you can actually make changes stick with the NES game. So keep that in mind. And I'm loving that it's doing this kind of effect, showing what your character changes to. That is very, very cool. Again, this game is absolutely unfinished, so you don't expect much from it. I would love to see that uh, unreleased Castlevania game for Dreamcast turn up, though. I've seen uh, footage of it, but I don't think it actually exists. Speaking of Castlevania, we're going to check out Castlevania, the standard version next, because it has additional characters as well as different levels, and it is the epitomate, uh, epitomal, penultimate version of Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And I would recommend not picking up the power up items because it's going to blind you if you do. <laughs> this is so bad. This kind of reminds me of Crusader No Remorse, just, uh, <laughs> I wish they would have finished this game, though. I know they would have done better. But you can always play the NES version of Werewolf, which is a great game, too. <laughs> I mean, look how many hits it takes me just to knock this guy down. He's there shooting me with a handgun. I'm lashing him with my claws over and over again, and he's still not going down. I'm sure you play games like this where you have to do multiple hits. It looks, <laughs> look, 20 hits to take this one guy down, and this is ridiculous. See if I can even run. Woo! I'm still kind of curious how far I can get into this game, though. It's just absolutely silly. Definitely reminds me of Crusader No Remorse with this three-quarter perspective thing going on, though. <laughs> but there we go. Uh, Werewolf, the unreleased game. Just had to check it out. We all know we get curious about unreleased games. But again, remember, if you ever have anything that you want to have in RetroArch that does not stick, load it in the S game. But again, we're going to do Akuma Do, Dracula, Gekka No, Yaseki Ko. And this is the definitive version of Symphony of the Night, better than the PlayStation 1 version. And we're going to load it with the Yubu's Core. And thank you, Broken Sprites, for recommending this game. Because I probably wouldn't have gotten to it immediately without your recommendation. But yes, this is a beautiful, beautiful thing indeed. And uh, some of the content from this version is actually in the PSP version of Dracula X Chronicles. So keep that in mind. You can actually unlock content from this version in the PSP version. But the PlayStation 1 version overall is not as good as this because you do not have the bonus characters and the bonus levels. So again, this is the best version, and unfortunately it was never released in the United States. So let's check this out and see if we can get anywhere. I'm hopeful that this game runs because the last time I played this was actually on the real Sega Saturn. So you're actually going to see me playing this on emulator for the very first time ever because this is one of the games that I've actually imported way back. Okay, so far so good. Okay, see how many characters I can get here. KM, FDM. I don't think I'm going to be able to get Anik this time, guys and gals, so we're just going to stick with KM, FDM. And look, we can pick a different characters. We're not stuck with just Alucard. We can pick Maria and uh, Richter. That is so awesome. This right here makes it the definitive version. Having this character selection. And obviously you can use Maria in uh, Rondo of Blood as well. But right here, guys and gals, this makes me so happy. Having a different character selection. You know what would make that even better? Having Grant, though. They really need to bring back Grant. They didn't even have him in the anime series on Netflix because they didn't think he fit within the, uh, the timeline. Okay. Let's check it out. Great intro here. Definitely not in the other version. 
And again, this does have a little bit of a long intro, but uh, I'm absolutely blown away by this right now. And uh, there was actually a, a hardware defect with the original game where you get slow down every once in a while, but if you want in, to a save point, kind of like in Metroid or Super Metroid, and saved it, the slowdown would inexplicably stop or go away after you save the game. So keep that in mind. Make sure you go to the save points. Oh yeah, Shadow Run, like a ninja. But here you go, Broken Sprites, this game is running awesome. So excited right now. Panzer Dragon Saga and this. I just need to be able to play Dragon Force a little bit more because it's going to take me about 10 minutes to get in game. But yes, you have Richter, Maria, as well as Alucard. You know what Alucard is backwards, of course. This music is awesome. So yes, we have another Castlevania game to play on our mini classics, particularly the PlayStation Classic for now. I mean, you can play this on the normal Yaboo's Core, but it's going to be running pretty damn slow on your Mega Drive S or NES Classic. But hopefully, in the future, we'll be able to change the requirements so we can run these faster. Out of course, the other mini classics other than the PlayStation Classic. And it still remains to be determined whether or not we can run this on, of course, the uh, TurboGrafx Mini. I'm really hopeful that it has better hardware specs than the uh, PlayStation Classic. But uh, I'm happy on this one. We're going to load another game now. And this is one game that I'm going to be coming back to because I want to be able to play as Maria. Uh, I'm loading the Atomic Spike games. We don't want to do that. I did that in my last video. Force of Habit. But Castlevania for the win. Uh, what else do we have here? We have Dark Savior, which is the follow-up to Landstalker. An incredible game, which is also on the Mega Drive Mini. We'll try this for a moment and cross our fingers that this one works. Again, yeah, boom's work in progress. Okay, I'm hopeful that this one works. Again, we've only had a few duds, which you've seen in my video. The only one I didn't load in my video that didn't work for me was Duke Nukem 3D, which has the uh, Death Hangs Y game. I'm kind of hoping I can get that one running too, because that'd be fun to play that Duke Nukem 3D. But yes, we can play it on DOSBox SVN as well. And I'm loving the font here. This title screen alone is beautiful. I'd love to have that as a painted in my living room. That is some of the coolest artwork on the title screen I've ever seen. Okay, Dark Savior, please work. Because Landstalker and this are just two impeccable games while we're playing. Okay, I'm going to have to do a new save file. And there's no guarantee how well saves are going to work yet. I'm going to do some more uh, testing on the saves to try to make sure that they actually save properly when you come back. This is especially going to be important for games like Dragon Force Broken Sprites. Because we don't want to have a game that we can't play because we can't save it. And I know that many of you aren't going to be leaving your system on for 50 hours on an RPG either. But yes, we have great Dark Savior running here. We're trying to get a little bit into this. And again, any other games that, uh, that you guys and guys want to see me run in my next demonstration, let me know. But I'm only going to do a couple more videos before I get the release out. But I'd like to showcase a few more games and test them, obviously. Okay. Let me get to some action here. Absolutely digging this game. Definitely feels like a nice spiritual successor to uh, the Landstalker game. There's even a Landstalker game on 3DS, which I showcased in the video before too. Okay, here we go. And I'm hoping I can get to some action there, because we all know sometimes you gotta walk around talking to people. It's been a while since I last played. Oh yeah, we got a weapon right from the get-go. Perfect. That's what I'm talking about. I love a game where I can actually use a weapon from the get-go and not have to just talk to people. Maybe it'll even let me take out the townspeople. Well, can't take him out. He's already been taken out. <laughs> Is he laying on the ground talking to me? Who's talking to me? And we have a little bit of a timer here. This game is running awesome. This is another great game. Okay, very cool. Oh, we don't want to walk on the poison or toxic waste, whatever have you will. Okay. 
But uh, you can see this game is definitely going to be a pretty damn awesome game to play. I'm not going to play it too long here. Oh, there we go. We can go around the corner there. So we have some true win-win situation games here. I think I'm going to try out Three Dirty Dwarfs next. Because I want another game that's a little bit like Guardian Heroes with a sense of humor. side scrolling brawler game. I have so many games I'm going to be playing after the update. When it starts snowing for the winter time, I have so many games to go to now. Okay. Okay, I'm not sure if I can take those down. It's been a while since I last played this. Okay, well, we're going to move on to another game because I don't want to be wandering around aimlessly not know where to go because it has been a while. We all know, like, even when you play Mario Galaxy 1 without the overhead world map, it is so easily to be lost. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, let's get another cool game in our lineup here that somebody requested. Actually, I'm kind of curious. I'm not entirely sure if this is going to run, but uh, Power Drift is another tough to run game. We're going to try this and see if it actually runs better than the Final Burn Alpha. And this is a very difficult game to run. I mean, typically, Mame 2010 is the one that's going to be running it best, but it doesn't run perfectly. So I'm kind of hopeful this is going to be running good on here, because we need at least one racing game that runs near flawlessly. I'm going to be testing all of the racing games, though, since I'm a huge, huge racing game fan. Uh, but let's see how this one performs. And there are a few other Sega Ages games as well, such as OutRun, Afterburner 2, and so on. And if you ever try running these and have issues with performance and speed on the main course, run them on MAME 2000 for the best performance for OutRun and, of course, uh, Afterburner 2. But let's see how this runs here. And, uh, again, this is going to be my first time testing this. All right from the get-go, it seems to be running pretty damn nice and smooth. i got to see how the controls work here, though, because, again, racing games might be finicky or tricky on the controls games. But so far, so good here. And sometimes you have to do gear shifting as well, so keep that in mind too. Like with the Hang On or uh, Super Hang On games. Music sounds nice and smooth. There we go, we got our gear shift there, as you can see in the bottom left there. And I don't even know how to accelerate yet. There we go. Do I have it? Okay, I'm getting used to the controls there, but it's actually running way better than the MAME 2010 version. This is crazy. This is running awesome. Beautiful. And I also have the uh, 3D version of this on my 3DS, though, but here we have officially the best running version of Power Drift. Look how blazingly fast this is. This is insane. Absolutely cool as hell. Wipeouts have never been so cool on this game on the Mini Classics. I'm definitely going to be checking out more racing games, though, and I love this sway effect. That is so cool. Like when you play, like, some of the games in the arcade, like Hang On and such, where you can lean on a real motorcycle, you know what I mean, within reason. At my blonde moment, uh, since I've never really rode a real motorcycle in real life, I got on one motorcycle game, uh, the Harley-Davidson game, and I'm here trying to find the accelerator. I didn't realize that it was on the handlebar, so there's my blonde moment for you, everybody. <laughs> Because I've never been on a real motorcycle other than riding on the back of it, bush-wise, when my dad used to give me a ride on it. When I was younger, uh, he'd do it and I'd fall asleep on the back of the motorcycle. Oh, this is so beautiful. I'm going to be coming back to this game without a doubt. I mean, awesome. Let's see what else we have here. But Power Drift is one of the best running games yet. Uh, and I'm, I'm not really sure of this one, but I'm going to try out Race Driving. This could be an absolute dud, everybody, but, uh, again, this is absolutely impossible or highly difficult to set up on the main core. I'm really hopeful that this game works well because the power drift runs so nicely. And again, up to this point, I've been so sad and miserable, almost to the verge of crying on tears that we had the craptacular version of Race Driving on Super Nintendo, which is nowhere even near the quality of the Sega Genesis version of Hard Driving. It looks so bad in comparison, it makes me want to cry. But I've been playing this version, the arcade version, on, of course, the Midway Arcade Volume 3 collection for PS2 and, of course, Xbox for all these years. But I'd love to see it come back. I mean, just show up on the Switch, PS4, or Xbox One, because way back in the day, I used to play uh, Hard Driving on Sega Genesis, along with Lakers vs. Celtics. 
awesome stuff here. Let's check it out. We're officially playing the arcade version on the Sega Saturn Core. And the controls are going to be very, very difficult. I'll probably crash around the first bend. Oh, yes, we got the polygonal awesomeness of the sit-down cabinet straight out of the arcade here. And the turn the ignition to start the car. Again, I'm probably going to crash. I mean, every time I started playing this in the arcade, I would crash, not even make it around this first bend because it is so difficult. You really have to drive, like, look, I'm driving 60. You cannot drive 60 around the corner. you got to take it around the corner at a much slower pace. So, yes, you got to definitely take it easy around this corner. Or you're going to be crashing hard. We got this. And I don't care that there are graphical glitches. I'm just happy that I'm able to finally play this game. Don't crash. And good luck, guys. We got to try to make it past that first part without crashing. Yes, we got graphical glitches, but I'm still happy I played this. Let's try switching camera mode here. I want to go full speed ahead here and see if I can jump off the big cliff and do some airtime. Woo! Oh, yeah. Bam! That is awesome. Bam! <laughs> okay, that's so cool. Even though we have graphical glitches, but we have time for one more game, and we're going to do Three Dirty Dwarfs is our final game. I'm going to be coming back to race driving, see if I can clean up the graphical glitches like we had with the uh, Legend of Oasis to start with, but we're doing Three Dirty Dwarfs, and here we go. Our final game for the video. And I'm hoping this one works. This is our final game for the video. If it crashes or does not work, I'll try loading one more in lieu of it. Let's see. Please work. So far, so good. And again, if you love Guardian Heroes, you're going to be right at home with this awesome, 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 I can say this a hundred times over, uh, obscure, gem, diamond in the rough game. There are just so many games out there that are like this, and just not enough of them, should I say. Kind of reminds me of the awesomeness of Gekido, which is on PlayStation 1 and on uh, the, uh, uh, should we say, Game Boy Advance. Another great fight in uh, Side Scrolling Brother series. Yeah, punch noises as you're even loaded. That is awesome. Something that actually takes your attention away. So let's play this for a brief moment, and then we're going to close up shop. See, a lot like Guardian Heroes. Oh, that is awesome! Reminds me of Raid 2 The Redemption, where we got the one character going around with a baseball bat and a bat. Baseball, I mean, hitting baseballs at people. So we got another game running awesome. A great win-win uh, for the end of this video. Oh, this is so beautiful. Reminds me of, like, a side-scrolling Castle Crashers. Or should we say Castle Crashers copied off of this game? Ah, uh, we should have one more life here. Let's continue. See if we can get a little bit further, but I hope you enjoyed the video, guys and gals. And feel free to request any other games you like to see. Maybe I just died on purpose so we can hear the punch, 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 kick uh, moves here. So we got a, the third game that I showcased in this video that I'm definitely going to be coming back to. You're going down. This has a really, really awesome soundtrack, as you can hear in the background, too. But yes, I love uh, Raid 2 Redemption, where it actually was a brother and sister team going around, and the guy would actually uh, throw baseballs up in the air and hit them at people with a baseball bat to kill them. That was absolutely crazy. What are you doing, Oscar the Grouch? Bye-bye. Oh, this is so cool. I'm getting my ass kicked, though. <laughs> Very cool. Definitely need some practice here, but hope you enjoyed the video, guys and gals. There'll be more to come.